Mortal Sin is really unique among solo developed games. I've played a ton of them, and at least in the 3D space, playing a game where the developer and publisher fields on Steam are literally just some dude's name is usually the sign of an exchange you're making. A sacrifice in polish and fine edges for a brainchildly sense of experimentation and passion. That's an exchange you need not make with Mortal Sin because it is polished and it has fine edges, while also delivering on a hell of a first person melee combat roguelike to boot. It's got some cheesy jump scare mechanics and repetitive challenge layouts that prevent it from being completely sinless in my book, but it ultimately makes up for it where it matters most, build variety and some juicy game feel. Between You and Victory in Mortal Sin is a series of three main levels that can be completed in any order and whose difficulty will escalate depending on said order. About a dozen classes may change the minutia of how that victory is attained, but the broad strokes are the same. Most classes and builds are going to revolve around a more robust than you'd think melee combat system. The crux of that system is a ton of hits done that lets you maintain long combos regardless of your weapon, which is something you'll especially want to do because of those long combo damage bonuses. But I think I was most shocked to see the extent of the unlockable move list, including but not limited to interrupting bashes, blocks, parries, whirlwinds, and a whole bunch of other techniques that demand using the above in sequence. It results in a moveset with way more choice and skill expression you'd see outside of more deliberate character action games, and it feels really good too. The hit stop makes it so that strikes land with satisfying weight, and the game's tendency to radically outnumber you also means you'll be getting that hit stop for dozens of enemies at the same time. There's a few smart mechanics in here to make its 1vx encounters feel both satisfying and fair. For starters, a limb dismemberment system will have blood and appendages flying around the room. To be fair, in all but the most particular builds, that limb dismemberment system is more of a cool visual flourish than it is a meaningful gameplay mechanic, but damn if it's not a good one. But the central pillar in making the outnumbered fights work is the fact that a perfectly timed parry won't just stagger a singular enemy, but also send out a minor shockwave to assure all nearby attackers are open to a counterattack too. It helps you fall into reliable attacking and blocking rhythms even in the most outrageous of encounters, and rewards deliberate play instead of mashing. It's a level of minute control that I don't think I've ever experienced in a first person roguelike, a genre that I find tends to be willing to forgo this level of micro and relies on its build diversity to flourish. But Mortal Sin has that too. Each of its classes has a different starting ability, but most of the mechanical differences lie in equipment being picked up mid-run. The name of the game is Extreme Power and Game Breaking Builds, something that Mortal Sin is okay with you doing presumably because the equipment isn't permanent. Limited durability will ensure you're cycling through multiple armor and weapon sets per run, though you can use durability potions to cling onto the most overpowered combos for a bit longer. I had a run with the Berserker character, who is immune to damage while he's whirlwinding, and I found two swords that let me instantly and near indefinitely whirlwind. Doesn't take a genius to figure out how that run went, and I for sure had a hell of a time carving through everyone. Some builds do fare much better than others based on, from what I can tell at least, is a CC immune final boss that will punish any kiting or slowing based build in favor of more explicit melee builds that play the parry game best with him. But otherwise the class diversity is meaningful and fun to experiment with, and hopefully they receive even more tools as it moves deeper into its early access window. There's also a focus on traps. The forests, caves, and dungeons you traverse through are hostile beyond just their enemies. Spikes and swinging axes are frequent occurrences, and while they do pose a serious threat with how much damage they deal, they can also be opportunities. Because the balance of tough but fair is realized through the fact that your foes are susceptible to these traps too. If you can position a trap between you and your opponent, you may be able to bait them into walking onto it. And if you can't, there's always the backup plan. Every class gets a Sparta kick that can be used to push enemies around and hopefully onto a trap that one-shots them, letting you save some of that precious weapon durability. On the presentation front, it probably goes without saying because you've been looking at footage for like 4 minutes, but any conversation about Mortal Sin would be incomplete without its striking aesthetic. The first official developer announcement on Steam about this game is his plea to have streamers and YouTubers set their output settings properly, lest they lose the game's beauty to compression. Because Mortal Sin is unmistakable, but it's relying on some clever post-processing tricks to mask what's no doubt modest solo dev assets underneath. But damn if it doesn't work. There's this grainy noise to everything that makes the world feel foreign and unwelcoming, but despite that noise, it also ensures that nothing important gets lost thanks to smart use of colors. Everything that matters is primary. Blue for enemies, yellow for strikes, and red for traps. 
It's simple and it works, all the while not compromising on its weird, macabre, and downright cool style. It's a visual language that will ensure you can glide through these levels by the time you've committed a dozen hours to it. And it also feeds back into the satisfaction of the combat by having nice horizontal slashes leaving dazzling yellow streaks as it propagates blood and limbs everywhere on your screen. It all reinforces the beauty that is the core melee combat system. It looks great, feels great, and is great. And that's also why the few times where Mortal Sin deviates from that core melee combat are where it seems to falter the most. In-game jump scares are a frustrating trap type you can wander into that are intentionally not telegraphed with the same color language that conventional traps are. Corridors and chests will occasionally trigger a slow on you that, if you don't dash out of it immediately, will give you a screamer and a huge hit on your health and durability. Though normally simple to get out of, the few times they catch you off guard they are an obstacle that can nosedive a strong run out of seemingly nowhere. Made all the more frustrating by the fact that they aren't bi-directional like the regular traps are and thus lack the same strategic opportunities. They're just cheesy punishments and boy do I wish I could turn them off. That also goes for the occasional challenge room doors that litter the levels. These challenge rooms often contain some of the rarest tier items in the game that can save or snowball a run. Yet the challenge itself is usually a first person trap dodging section rather than anything to do with its combat. Some builds can trivialize the encounters, but outside of a few particular mobility spells, you're going to be playing a slow game of Trap Simon Says with impossibly high stakes. Though technically optional, their high rewards mean you'll feel obligated to do them when playing optimally, and their challenge is just a weird ancillary skill that the rest of the game just does not demand, expecting a level of 3D spatial awareness that's hard to have in a first person game. But if my time in Catholic schooling has taught me anything, it's that those are venial sins, sins that are lesser to mortal and don't entail damnation of the soul. They are sins I'm no doubt willing to forgive, for a game that otherwise delivers on meaningful builds, killer aesthetic, and intensely satisfying melee combat. If you're watching this video at the time of its upload, then Mortal Sin will be releasing in a few days with an early access tag that I barely think it needs. This game delivers on its core premise with a level of polish and readiness that you wouldn't expect from that tag or from a publisher that's a dude's name. And the biggest sin you could commit is not giving it a shot.